um, replication method, right? So these were the two types of uh, distribution models which we had discussed in the last class, right? So good morning all. So we will formally start our the uh, class, right? And uh, we will look into a few more things which are related to NoSQL uh, databases today. I hope that you have uh, gone through the case studies which was a recorded lecture series and was uploaded to YouTube in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks, right? So now the focus will shift towards uh, some of the very key important NoSQL databases, right? So I'll just uh, share the screen now. Fine. So I think the uh, uh, screen is visible to all of you, right? So the first thing that we are trying to do here is uh, uh, we are trying to focus on uh, two important categories of uh, NoSQL databases. So the, these two important categories are one of them is a CP tolerant database. The other one is a, a AP tolerant database, right? A CP tolerant database is a consistent and partition tolerant database. An AP tolerant database is an availability and partition tolerant database, right? So one example of um, a CP tolerant database is the uh, MongoDB, right? So MongoDB uh, comes with its own set of um, uh, features. It, it comes with its own set of uh, uh, you know, uh, characteristics. So these are some of, some of the things which uh, I just wanted to highlight in this particular uh, uh, in this particular presentation, right? And after the presentation, the, uh, the this particular session is being recorded, right? Uh, and I want you to accept the recording. If, if at all there is a pop up that, which comes onto your uh, uh, screen, right? So after the meeting is done, the recorded version of this particular meeting will be uploaded to YouTube as usual. And the link of the same will be shared here, Google Classroom. Okay. So these are some of the things which I wanted to say before I start my class. All right. And uh, let's start with the presentation. So MongoDB uh, is a leading NoSQL solution. Right. It's uh, fastest growing in terms of the job index. Right. If you take Gartner index or if you take uh, Nauki.com's index, the key technical skills that they are looking for today is uh, on MongoDB, right? Because it has become extremely popular in chatbots. It has become extremely popular in AI engines. It has become extremely popular in many of the applications that we are trying to talk about today's uh, trend, right? So from Indeed.com also, the job trend says the key skills the top 10 key skills that you that an engineer is required to have uh, to be hired is uh, html5 mongodb ios android right mobile application development puppet hadoop jquery uh, pass and social media these are the top 10 skills and under that you can see that mongodb is being highlighted as the second trend in the growing job needs right so there is a huge demand in the market if you are known with mongodb skills so what I would advise you is that MongoDB is an open source uh, database system. You can as well download it and install it on your uh, systems, right? You can try it out uh, of how it works, record that uh, lecture series to me, upload it to YouTube and share me a link so that I get to know that you have done this uh, exploratory study, right? So I expect this exploration to happen by somewhere around 4th of April. And you must send me a video of how you have explored it along with the audio for that particular uh, video and uh, show that you have done that uh, some workout with respect to that MongoDB, right? So Jasper Soft is another uh, key index in big data, right? Um, so here also it says demand for MongoDB, a document oriented NoSQL database is the biggest uh, spike in the uh, growth in 2011. Right. Today, if you take 2020, it is really at the top, right? 
um there are 451 mongodb research groups which are talking about different different aspects of uh, mongodb right uh, especially uh, different aspects of mongodb especially even in the google search you can see that couchdb and mongodb are the highest search which are being done uh, even today right a uh, very important thing that i wanted to tell you is uh, please visit information week magazine right uh the link for the same is informationweek.com you can google it around under that you have got something called as big data analytics you can see that there are top trends of uh, big data analytics which is being uh, performed right now if i can just take a detour right and uh, see what is happening in uh, with respect to uh, big data analytics i just want to go to that particular link and show it to you so i will just stop stop the sharing now uh, you can i am sharing the entire uh, uh, screen so you can see that uh, you can see my uh, home screen here right so just see that uh, go to google.com right there you can type uh, information this is a very a good trend of uh, uh, a good trending magazine earlier in uh, uh, 10 years back we used to get magazines actually now this entire magazine is an e online magazine right you can go there and study anything about the uh, 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 the latest trends which are happening okay under da data management you have got ai and machine learning big data analytics hardware architecture software platforms and iot so just go to big data analytics here so you can see that last uh, uh, you know some of the research works which are happening right for example supercomputers recruited to work on covid 19 research right the ibm has already set up a research center with supercomputers to understand the pandemic of covid 19 the blood sample reports and other patient reports which are already there is being put up on the supercomputer for doing the analysis right so this is one of the biggest uh, uh, trends which are ha happening in uh, information weeks it is reporting what are the latest trends which are happening right if you open this particular link you can see that ibm's uh, summit which is the latest uh, supercomputer of ibm right uh, which has got uh, 7 7 75000 cpu cores right 7 75000 cpu cores and 34000 gpu uh, systems which are uh, integrated with it is being put up for solving covid high performance computing consortium research which includes amazon web service google cloud microsoft mit right and other uh, key players in us who are trying to solve this pandemic of uh, covid 19 right this these are the direct applications of uh, um, big data analytics right especially big data where you are trying to analyze the large amount of data which has got lot of intricacies uh, uh, complexities and things like that you are trying to analyze them right i hope you will be able to uh, see them on a daily basis so now let me just come back to my presentation right we were trying to deal with mongodb is my mongodb screen uh, visible to all of you you can type something in the chat box okay so it's an s from all of you fine so let us come back to mongodb we were dealing with mongodb uh, related uh, stuff right so uh, as i said mongodb has taken a lot of um, uh, you know leading uh, uh, thing in the market today right so mongodb why for electronic records examples uh, like some of these examples what you see here they are all electronic records right uh hl edi mark mods 
DDMS, these are all examples of an electronic record, right? So the electronic records are typically document-oriented uh, objects, right? They are usually represented in form of XMLs, free text, binaries, or something called as JSON object. We will see what is the structure of this particular JSON object. When you see a mass variation in the used fields, especially the sparse data problem in RDBMS, right? You cannot use such kind of systems for representing a uh, document-oriented uh, subjects, right? You also see that there is a lot of change in the business model. Uh, use cases keeps uh, changing every day, right? If you see that uh, we were uh, talking about an employee or an ERP type of database, and today we are trying to talk about applications related to social media. So there is a huge change in the uh, way in which we are looking at applications. And uh, because of the demand of data storage that we are seeing in all of these applications, our trends of uh, looking from an RDBMS perspective or to a NoSQL has completely changed, right? We also see that the big data also comes with a lot of velocity and voluminous, right? So such kind of volume and velocity cannot be handled in case of normal RDBMS systems. Now, this is a very important uh, uh, example. Right. I would like to pause uh, for a moment for this particular slide and have all of you uh, to look into this. Right. So the reason is because this is a very important example of a JSON object for a healthcare application. HL7 is a health record application. Right. So you can see that the beginning and the ending of the JSON object starts with a curly braces, ends with the curly braces. So it is a highly scoped document. Right, and every tag, whatever that you are trying to label, comes with a quotes. The name of the label ends with a quote, and then there is a colon. Right, this after this colon, this uh, there is a scope variable which is your curly braces. Right, so this curly braces ends here. That means within this particular key, the uh, the value that is represented is this. This is the value that is represented. Right. Now, similarly, what are the uh, attributes of this clinical document? The attributes of this clinical document are record target and author. These are the two attributes which, which is there within it. Now, as I said, the JSON objects are highly nested documents. That means you can go for nesting at any level. Right? You can do nesting for n number of levels in, uh, in a particular example. Right? Now let's take an example of record target. Now record target is again an attribute and under this particular attributes, we have several other attributes. What is that? Patient role, patient, right? Then providers organization. These are the three attributes which are supporting for this particular key value, key. This is the key and this is the value. This is a key and this is a value, right? Now for the patient role, what are the uh, I mean, for the patient, what are the attributes that it has got? Name, then it has got family name, suffix, birth time. These are the attributes which are related to patient. Now, similarly, for provider's organization, the name is the attribute. The value associated with it is the good health clinic, right? So this ends the patient role, right? And this ends the record target. Now, when you come to the author, the attributes which are there in author is time, assigned author. So for assigned author, it has got sub attributes like assigned person, name, given family, prefix, so on, represented organization, and it closes, right? The author name also closes here, right? So this is a simple example of a scope document of a JSON object, right? I hope this particular slide is very clear because you may have to try out certain examples on MongoDB and show that as a part of your recorded uh, assignment series, right, home assignment series, that you are able to explore something with respect to MongoDB, right? So MongoDB is basically general purpose. It has got a very rich data model, featured uh, texts, sophisticated query language. The query language is not as simple as what you have seen in case of SQLs, right? SQL, it is just select star from so on to uh, where some condition is being given or you have create table uh, table name and list of attributes with that particular table name so this is not uh, such a simple query language the query language is slightly complicated we'll come to that particular part of it at the later stage 
right? Then you have ease, ease of using. You have easy mapping to object-oriented code, native language drivers in popular languages, simple to set up and manage, right? The last important feature is it is fast and scalable, operates in in-memory speed wherever possible. Auto sharding is built in. That is, any number of uh, client nodes are there, it automatically does sharding, right? You know, sharding is nothing but different piece of information being stored in different locations. Replication is same piece of information being stored in different servers, right? Now, dynamically, you can add and remove the capacity with no downtime. You need not have to switch off the server to add a particular node, or you need not have to switch off the entire uh, uh, cluster nodes to remove a particular node in case of MongoDB. It's a very flexible uh, system. So again, uh, MongoDB is uh, easy to use. Right? For example, now this particular left hand side of this particular site is something which is very similar that you are already aware of. This is a class diagram of a relational model that you have developed uh, using a relational uh, system. Now, if you are trying to convert that into a MongoDB kind of a syntax with uh, um, with a document object as a, as a JSON object, the representation of it would look something like this, right? You have title, contributors, your name and email ID, then model, relational is false, awesome is true. These, these are some of the examples of how uh, JSON objects are represented, which is equivalent to that of your relational schema model. Okay. Again, I, I would like to pause for a moment, right, so that you can have a look into this particular slide before I go ahead with the remaining things. Okay, let's proceed further. So how do you use MongoDB? Right, this is a very typical example that which I wanted to share, right? Now let's say that in MySQL, right, you had used this uh, syntax, right? Insert into contacts values. Right. This is a typical syntax in SQL for inserting a value into a particular table, right? And then you had a list of such kind of insert queries to insert into a particular table. Then you used to use commit. In case of MongoDB, the same equivalent uh, way of how it is being done is db.contact. db is the superclass. Contact is the name of that particular table, right? In here, it is called as document name. Then dot save. Dot save is an option which is similar to that of insert in case of SQL. And this is how you insert the values. Username is the attribute name, the equivalent value for it. Email address is the attribute name, the equivalent value for it. Now, if a particular attribute is a multi-valued attribute that it has got more than one value, then the representation is the square brackets. You can observe that it is a square bracket, followed by the curly braces for completing the for this particular document object, followed by the normal braces to complete this particular system call, which is called a save system call. Right. So this is how your uh, uh, your uh, MongoDB queries are represented. Right. So I hope this particular slide is very clear. Right. So moving further ahead, so MongoDB is a schema-free system. That is, it does not need a predefined schema. Every document has a different different data set, right? This is an example that which I wanted to give. The document here is a different schema. The document here is a different schema. The document here that is being represented is a different schema. The document here is represented as a different schema. This is also a different schema. So if you observe the examples which are being annotated on my slide, so every document object which is being represented as a JSON object is 
uh, is in a different different format right it is not in the same format right every object what you see here is in a different representation right it's not the same uh, representation as we use okay so this is uh, one of the uh, a simple example of how um, the uh, uh, mongodb is truly a schema free database okay now when you take mongodb as fast and scalable a relational database would clump the data into blocks and these blocks or chunks are located in different different parts of your uh, local uh, hardware device wherever it is being loaded right you can see that there is a one block here another block here another block here but when you are talking about uh, mongodb whatever is the data locality of it it clumps the data together and keeps it right you can see that there are three consecutive blocks which are represented for mongodb here right and it also does something called as in memory caching whatever are the frequent data sets that that is being constantly being referred by the client they are all stored in cache they are never taken off from the cache at all right that means this is a penalty to the cache as well but on the other hand the, it this makes the system more fast also right let's say that your system is only working on database and nothing else so it is truly obvious that keeping um, the data uh, which are very relevant in cache would be most appropriate in this particular case right and also you may look at the third important uh, feature of mongodb which is distributed architecture that is it improves horizontal scaling you can add any number of rack servers into it right you can add one more you can add one more like this right and the replication is vertical wise right you do replication within this particular rack you do replication within this particular rack you do replication within this particular rack right that means every rack the representation of a red node is a master any one of them is a replication node in this case right so the very important uh, uh, statements which are being released by tom tan uh, Tony uh, Tam, a CTO of WordNet, is that we just cannot get any faster than the way MongoDB handles the data, right? So people have appreciated the way in which the data is being handled in case of MongoDB, right? Remember, very important thing under the CAP theorem, MongoDB is a CP tolerant database. It is not an AP tolerant database. That is, it enhances uh, consistency. It also ensures partition tolerance at the same time. So some of you may ask me, sir, RDBMS had a lot of security features. It had SSL, it has got open authentication systems, it has got a lot of authentication parameters, it has got security like SSH and things like that. Now, when you talk about MongoDB, MongoDB also comes with a bundle of security features, right? For example, the client and server are interlinked using SSL, secure socket layer. Right? So the intra cluster, cluster communication is completely through SSL. So the authorization at the database level is read only, read plus write, or the administrator level. Right? So the security roadmaps is that it has got pluggable authentication. Uh, the exact library name is called as PAM 2.4. It has got auditing software within it. With, uh, then it has got call level security, that is system call level security. Then it has got something called common criteria certification. These are some of the security features which are imbibed in MongoDB. So what is the next step? The next step is MongoDB is open source. There is no cost in downloading it and using it, right? That's the reason why I'm asking you to download MongoDB, explore it, explore the uh, uh, you know uh, use cases, explore the commands, show me a video that you have done the exploration right it's absolutely free of cost you can exp experiment by yourself you need not have uh you want to system for it even with your windows system whatever is being installed on your laptops you can just explore it right so tension is the actual group which uh, uh, developed this software called as mongodb and they are the experts in database technology right and OSHRA is uh, is another group which is using this MongoDB for healthcare solutions, right? So usually the consortium is an open source consortium, 
where Tenji and Osho experts build a working prototype that will directly help uh, or benefit certain veterinarian healthcare uh, applications. So you can also look into such kind of applications. Okay. So I hope uh, all the concepts with respect to MongoDB are clear. We are again going to another example database. Right. The other example database is Cassandra. Right. A very popular uh, database again. Uh, this Cassandra was initially used by Facebook for many years till officially Facebook moved to a new database called as HBS. Right. So we will see some of the case studies with respect to Cassandra and why it has taken become very extremely popular database in case of uh, uh, some of the social networks. Now, what is Cassandra? Cassandra is an open source database management system, very similar to that of a relational system, but it's actually a non-relational system, right? And there are several key features of Cassandra that differentiate it from the other system, right? Now, if you see this box here is a system of relational database. All the relational database examples, something like uh, new SQL, MySQL, PostgreSQL, these are all the examples of relational database. There is also a concept called new SQL, which is a combination of relational as well as non-relational systems, right? So that also we have, uh, uh, there are a so few examples, something like MySQL cluster, right, then Nimbus and so on. Now, if you come to this particular slide, these are examples of non-relational database systems, right? You have got Piccolo, you have got Dryad, Hadoop, and these are some of the examples of non-relational systems, especially when you come to my no skills kind of system, you have got key value database where in which you have got Cassandra, CouchDB, right? These are examples of big, big tables, right? Voldemort, Berkeley DB. When you talk about document database, you've got CouchDB, MongoDB, this we have explored, RavenDB, right? Big tables, you've got Hypertable and HBase, right? As a service tables, you've got SimpleDB, Cloudent, right? Apps, uh, engine database, graphs, you've got infinite graph, uh, Neo4j and graph database. These are some of the uh, different data models which are explored in case of NoSQL, right? Now, history of Cassandra, as I have already mentioned, Cassandra was used to power Facebook's input search message. And uh, Facebook uh, used this open source Cassandra project in 2018 and became an Apache incubator project by itself. In uh, 2010, Cassandra graduated to a top level project. There were regular updates and uh, releases that were done uh, with respect to Cassandra. And that was the time when most of the apps which were there on mobile phones started becoming extremely popular, right? So from 2010 to 2014, Android become, uh, became very popular in uh, many of the mo uh, global mobile markets, right? That was the time when a uh, lot of apps uh, started coming into markets, right? So the motivation and function, these are the motivations. Designed to handle large amount of data. It is designed to uh, handle lot of unorganized data. Easy to implement and deploy. Mimics the traditional relational database systems, right? With triggers, lightweight transactions. Even the query language, what is there in uh, relational, is the same in case of Cassandra also, right? We call it as Cassandra query language in this case. It is raw and has simple data structures. One of the biggest strength of uh, Cassandra is Cassandra is a AP tolerant database. The previous example of a MongoDB that we saw is a CP tolerant database, right? So the AP tolerant database ensures availability and partition tolerance. It gives least importance to consistency or it has got eventual consistency is what we basically talk about, right? So the general design features of uh, Cassandra is it is it emphasizes on performance over analysis. It has uh, support for Hadoop organizations, which has row organized into tables. The first component of the uh, table's primary key is a partition key in this case, right? L rows are clustered by remaining columns of the key. The columns may be indexed separately from the primary key. The tables are created, dropped, altered at runtime without blocking the queries. The language which is used for uh, 
a querying is called as Cassandra query language, which is called as CQL, which is similar to that of SQL systems. So when it comes to scalability, University of Toronto made a study. The study was the throughput with respect to the number of uh, nodes with respect to some of the no SQL databases. They compared Cassandra, Hbase, Voldemort, Redis, and MySQL. Now, what happened in terms of scalability is that the re uh, read and write throughput linearly increased as number of machines were added, right? The clear winner in this particular segment was Cassandra, right? If you see Cassandra, it has linear scaling, right? The throughput increases with respect to the number of nodes, right? But when you talk about other databases like uh, MySQL, MySQL actually uh, flattened itself uh, when the number of nodes got to be uh, two or four, right? Similarly, other also did not show very well uh, uh, throughput with respect to uh, the change in read write th throughputs. So when you compare uh, uh, Apache's uh, Cassandra with that of Google's Big Table and Amazon Dynamo, the storage type in Cassandra is uh, column based. It's a columnar family database. The best is uh, read or write often, read less. The concurrency model is MVCC model it uses. The characteristics is it is highly available, partition tolerant, persistent databases, right? When you're talking about Google Big Table, it is columnar database designed for large scalability. It is having locks, right? Consistency, uh, high availability, partition tolerance, and persistence. These are some of the uh, very important three terms here. Amazon Dynamo is key value paired. It's large database solution. It abides by the asset properties which are similar to that of relational database. It is consistent and highly available, right? You remember that most of the relational database are CA tolerant database. That is, it is consistent and highly available databases. Now we have already seen that Netflix uses Cassandra as, the, as its official database, right? It's an online uh, retail uh, system, which is used for streaming movies, TV shows, and other things, right? Nelson's study was uh, done, which showed 38% of Americans used to subscribe for Netflix. Right? In uh, Indian scenario, the Netflix is very costly, right? It is priced very high. But we see that there is a percentage of user groups, somewhere around 18%, uh, being subscribed for uh, Netflix. Why Cassandra was chosen as a part of Netflix? Jason Brown is a senior software engineer at Netflix. He says that the central SQL system is negatively impacting the scalability and uh, availability. International expansion required multiple data center solutions. So the need for a configurable replication consistent and resilient uh, in face of failure was required. So Cassandra on AWS was offered as a high level of uh, scalability and availability, right? Cassandra was hosted on cloud. Okay, the next example um, application is Spotify. Spotify is a um, online uh, digital music service, much similar to that of Savan and Ghana.com, right? The music for every moment for computer, phone, tablet, and more. Here also, Cassandra was chosen. Why Cassandra was chosen? It says more number of users, scalability problems arise with PostgreSQL, right? This is the PostgreSQL is a relational database. With multiple data centers streaming, replication in PostgreSQL was a problematic, right? There were high write volumes. So that is the reason why they chose Cassandra, where there is uh, no single point of failure, no data loss confidence, big table design, right? These are some of the important aspect of why they used it in Spotify app. Similarly, you have got another app called as Hulu. Hulu is basically a website and a subscription service offering on-demand streaming video, right? There are 30 million uh, unique viewers per month for Hulu, right? It's a very popular app in America, right? Why did they use uh, this? There is a need for availability, scalability, good performance, nearly linear scalability, 
geo replications and uh, minimal maintenance requirement these are some of the aspects of why they used um uh, you know kesendra for this particular applications right you may you may see that all of these companies are tier 1 companies uh, uh, it may be spotify halu netflix and other things you have to uh, put yourself in uh, you know getting a job in these kind of uh, companies right aim for these kind of companies because you are get, getting a knowledge of big data today you are getting a knowledge of nosql database try to practically work out with these uh, things and when you do a practical exposure at home and experiment with some, some of these databases like Cassandra and uh, MongoDB, right? You get practical exposures, so you can add that into your resumes, right? And this will be an added advantage for your recruiters to look into it, right? I would sincerely urge all of you to experiment with Cassandra as well as MongoDB, record it and send it across to me by 4th of April. So the reasons for common reasons for choosing Cassandra is that it is a value for availability. It has got high write throughputs, high scalability. There is no single point of failure. These were the common reasons for choosing why Cassandra was very much required for these kind of applications. So now we come to a very important slide. I would again like to pause pause for a moment. Right, the, the reason is because. Uh, this particular slide is very, very important. The CAPTL, right? Uh, you have got consistency, availability, and partition tolerant, right? Now look at CA compliance. CA compliance is for a normal RDBMS, right? All the RDBMS systems like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Greenplum, Vertica, these are all the SQL systems which are basically CA compliant. Now, when you talk about AB compliant, you've got Cassandra. Uh, Simple DB, Couch DB, Relic, Dynamo, Voldemort, Tokyo Cab Cabinet, KIA. These are some of the um, AP tolerant database. Now, when you talk about CP tolerant database, which is there at the bottom, right? You have got Bigtable, Hypertable, HBase, MongoDB, Ter TerraStore, Scalaris, then Berkeley's DB, Memcache DB, and Redis. These are all the database, right? Now, what is consistency? All clients have the same view of, of the data. What is availability? Each client can always read and write. What is partition tolerant? The system works well despite the physical network partitions about the data, right? So this particular slide is very, very important, right? The ones which are highlighted in green are column oriented. The ones which are in blue are um, key value pair. The ones which are there in this, this particular color are document oriented. Right. You might ask me uh, why is that you have not represented graph model, right? So the graph model is usually a uh, consistent uh, uh, CP tolerant database. So it basically comes under uh, CP sector. So moving ahead, we have already seen um, eventual consistency, right? Which is a base property, basically available soft state, eventually consistent, which is against the asset properties. So if all the writer stops, then all its values will convergently eventually be consistent. If the write continues, then the system will always try keeping to converge the consistency, right? So the convergence here are measured in something like this. R plus W should be greater than N, where R is the records to be read, W is the records to be write, N is the replication factor. Right. So the consistency level is a consistency level is one. One is either read or write is one. Quorum, either read or write is ceiling where n plus one by two is the formula for it. All, all means either write, uh, either read or write is equal to n. So if you want to write with consistency level of one, then get the same data when you read. Uh, when you need to read the consistency of all levels. So the key value model which is used in Cassandra looks something like this. It's a column family database, right? So column oriented NoSQL system basically. So this is how it looks like. You have key space and the column families, right? So the column families are again uh, separated as key value row wise. 
using the relational database analogy that is you have row id as the key and then you have got uh, the value which is substantiated with it row is a collection of columns labeled with name So comparing Cassandra with uh, RDBMS, RDBMS has a normalized data model which is con uh, created without considering the exact queries. SQL can re uh, return almost anything through joins. But here in case of uh, C star, the data model is designed for specific queries. The schema is adjusted every time for new queries. C star does not have joins, relationships, or foreign keys. A separate table is leveraged, uh, leveraged for each query. The data required by multiple tables is denormalized across the tables. Cassandra architectural overview has uh, was designed with an understanding that the system hardware failures cannot occur. It's a peer-to-peer -peer distributed systems. All nodes are same. The data partition amongst the nodes in the cluster, custom data replication to ensure there is a fault tolerance, read and write anywhere design, Google Big Table data model where it is column families, mem tables, and SST tables. Amazon Dynamo table is distributed system technology which has got consistent hashing, partitioning, replication, and one hop routing. The advantages of Cassandra is perfect for time series data high performance decentralization right nearly uh, linear scalability replication support right then you have uh, no single point of failures map reduce support so the weakness of cassandra is that it does not have any reference uh, referential integrity constraint, uh, constraint it does not uh, support the concept of joins Right? Remember that when a database is a partition tolerant database, the common features of relational algebra like join, uh, referential integrity, and several uh, important constraints of a relational database does not apply when it is a partition tolerant database. Right? Because the data does not reside in one single place, rather, it resides in uh, physically different network systems. Right? Query options for retrieving data are limited. Sorting data is a design decision. So there is no group by or no sort by uh, class, no support for atomic operations. If the operations fails, changes can still occur. Uh, first think about queries and then think about the data model. So this is a weakness of Cassandra system. So MapReduce, uh, as we have already seen MapReduce, it is nothing but uh, map is a function where a single input key is aggregated and whose output is a bunch of key value pair. The output would be key value pairs corresponding to line items. Each one would have product ID as well as key embedded with map with the quantity of price and other values, right? So MapReduce has its own representation of key value systems, right? Which is also predominantly a data model for uh, many of the databases, right? So now what I would like to do is, I would like to stop at this particular moment, right? and uh, emphasize that uh, you must explore a lot of things with respect to mongodb as well as uh, cassandra record it over send it over to me with a youtube link in the google classroom uh, by around 4th of april so i will just review it and find out what, how you have gone through your assignment i ex i expect you to do an exploration with respect to mongodb and cassandra okay so um i will stop at this particular moment and this uh, forum is now open for any kind of uh, doubts